Hey everyone, we are back. It is Friday. You know what time it is. Classic Tabletop RPG Friday, that is. It's time for us to get back into our Classic Traveler RPG series. And for those of you who are coming back, welcome back, y'all. What's up? And for those of you who may be stopping by for the first time, hey, my name is Servant of Shiloh, and this is RPG Elite. This place right here is the place where I focus. I focus with laser precision on putting the RP back into tabletop RPG, that is. And the way that I do that is by giving you tools, tips, tutorials, real talk about the tabletop RPG space and culture. And I do all of this for you. Yes, you, because I want you to have a more immersive and enjoyable tabletop RPG experience. Last week, we started Starship Economics. And really we focused on all the ways that you are gonna have to spend money if you own a starship. All the expenses that you're going to have owning one. However, today we're gonna start a series on ways that you can make money with your starship. And really the two major ways that you can do this. And if you like this game and you're digging the series, Listen, down in the description below is gonna be a whole bunch of links for you to get Classic Traveler or whatever other tra kind of Traveler that you want. What we're gonna do right now is we're gonna slide right into this series and look at some ways you can get a little bit of Skrilla because you know you, know you gotta spend a lot of money you know, keeping up this stuff. So let's get into it. On the other side, I've got what I always have, which is the question of the vid. Let's go ahead and do this, folks, and roll them. <laughs> With all the expenses a starship owner incurs, it behooves them to employ the ship to make some kind of revenue. I mean, they gotta get some Skrilla going on. There are three major ways to do this in Classic Traveler. So for our example today, we will be looking at using the Class A free trader that is owned by Captain Sky Alex Beckon which is a really weird way of how he spells that. And most people just call him Sab, S-A-B, because his names are, you know, they're weird and difficult to pronounce and just look weird. So we're just gonna call him Sab. Let's take a closer look at Sab here, Sky Alex Becken. And here is his character sheet and here he is. Now, I know he's only 39, he's going gray early. As a matter of fact, I used to work for a guy this is way back in the day, and he was like around the same age, you know, late 30s, early 40s, early 40s. And he had gray all over the place. He was just he was graying up like immediately. So it is possible to have this gray in your beard and be this age. As a matter of fact, I actually know somebody personally who is uh, younger than I am, 38 years old and has gray in their beard. Uh, not a little bit either. I'm just saying, y'all, it is possible. Let's take a look at him. So this is Sab, and these are all of his skills here. And his background is that he's got a whole family that's been in the military, right? So I think his dad was Marines, brothers of Marines. His mom was in the Scouts, though, but she always said, hey, go ahead, do your thing. And so even though he was kind of expected to go into the Marines, he decided, you know, the merchants is calling my name. So he went into the merchants, did his thing, excelled, actually. I think he is a first officer or something like that. He did very well. And towards the end there, he started getting into some of the, a uh, little bit more of the shady stuff, you know. So he knows a little something, you know. But he mustered out, got a pension, and he's got a ship. And that is what we are going to use him for today. We're going to use sab for his ship and the ship that he has is a free trader let's see what a free trader can do as far as the revenue you can get if you just so happen to own one now he got one mustering out so that's always a good thing Transporting goods from one world to another is a major source of income for starship owners and classic traveler. How they are introduced to these can be by patrons or adventure-specific incidents. 
However, they do not have to be that way. They can just ask at a starport if there are any cargo that needs to be transported. And the referee is going to determine ahead of time, or they might just do it on the fly right there, whether or not that will be the case. Now, to determine whether cargo is available for transport at a starport, the referee should consult the cargo table. So let's go ahead and let's pull that up right now. So we can get Dan Brash tags right chair. Okay, here's a cargo table. And I'm just going to close that out so we can end up big one. This is a cargo table. Now, on the left-hand side here, you're going to see the world population digit. This digit is going to correspond to the world of origin of the world that they are on. So once it is determined what the population is of the world that they are on, then you're going to cross-reference the result to see what major, minor, and incidental cargo is on that world, possibly. So we're going to um, go here to worlds, pull up the subsector that I create it. And I've already decided that this is going to be at Rustia. This is the place where they are at. And since they're on a free trader, and let's pull up this free trader here. So since they're on a free trader, we got to look at the stats here for this free trader. So th the free trader has jumped one drive. And in a subsector hex grid, going back here, that means they can only move one hex. Jump two, two hexes, so on and so forth. So I've already kind of, just for the example for today, they're going to be moving from Rustia to Zakur. Now, I've also did dual, or I had it set up for dual, but I'm just, I'm not going to do both of them. We're just going to do Zakur today, just so you guys will know how to set this up, if you are going to be refereeing this thing. So before rolling, we also have to consult the die modifiers, which are at the bottom of the cargo table right chair. First, since we're on Rustia, let's go ahead and see the planet details here. All right. All right. So these are the planet details of the UPP or the Universal Planetary Profile. And normally it's just one long string of numbers and letters if possible. But for me, I'm just going to give this all to my players if I'm the one that happens to be running it. Just so this is, you know, the information looks more full and robust and it's just better. So what we got here is a size, a population of five, hundreds of thousands, actually between 600 and 700 K specifically. So what we would do is go over to the cargo table, look at five here. And it looks like that there's a potential for 1D plus one major cargoes and a potential of 1D plus two minor cargoes and absolutely no incidental cargoes just because there's not enough population. But we have to go down to these modifiers down at the bottom as well for the destination world. And remember, we're going to Zakur, so let's go ahead and get some details for Zakur now. All right, so here's in Zakur and they have, uh, we're gonna pull this up here. So it says if population is four or less it's going to be a minus four modifier and we do have that population is one <laughs> one to a hundred that's all we got here ah. so it's going to be a minus four on that if the population was eight plus they get a plus one if it was a red zone there's no cargo if amber zone there's no major cargo uh-oh if we go back here to our travel zone, we see that this is an amber zone and it has dangerous creatures here. That's the reason very dangerous creatures. That's why there's not that many people there. It's only got one installation. So since that is the case, we're not even going to be rolling on major cargoes. So there will be no major cargo going to Zakur. Okay. Well, then the last one is the tech level. And we have to add or subtract the difference between the origin and the destination planets so here for Zakur, we've got a tech level of two let's go back to rustia and see what we have for that and it appears as if they got a tech level of 10 so the difference is going to be a positive eight in order to roll for this minus four and a plus eight which actually ends up being a plus four 
Now, we're not going to do any majors, so we're only going to do minors. And if we have a plus four, actually, it's going to be a plus six. So it's one D plus six. I'm going to go over here and go over to my die. I'm going to put one, uh -oh, go back, one D plus six. And that's how many minor cargo that it's going to have to deliver to Zakur. So let's see how many we get. Ooh, 11. Nice. Now, once the amount of cargo has been determined, you're going to roll for the cargo component tonnage for each one. So there's 11 of them. So you have to roll for all 11 of them. And you multiply by 10 if it's a major cargo, five if it's in a minor cargo, and one if it's incidental. So in this case, we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, eight, blah, blah, blah. Uh. 11 d6 now it's going to automatically add them up when we roll but we're going to get around that in a second and this is how you're going to do it you're going to roll all right let me 43 for 11 of them i'm going to click on this i'm going to scroll down you can see all 11 of these all of these since they're minor cargo it's going to be multiplied times five for each one and we're going to go over here to Rustia and we're going to go on cargo availability here and since they're uh, actually going to be none for the major and none for the incidentals too since we looked at that so since we're only going to do minors here we're going to do 11 times the tonnage for each one let me go ahead let me cut out of here and then we're going to come right back to this and you're going to see what i'm talking about for each one all right so as you can see here the cargo availability to go to zakur i've put all 11 of them i've done all 11 of them multiplying each one of these by five so you have five tons 20 tons 20 tons 25 tons just going down the line here now, the next thing we need to do is since we have this free trader and we need to pull that back up. We need to see how many tons of cargo that this free trader can carry. If we go down here to cargo, we're going to see it says 81. Now, in classic traveler, it says 82. And so we're going with classic traveler because this one here is from the mongoose one and we're going to just use this kind of like as it looks prettier how's that so let's go back here and what we'll need is since he 82 tons is what he can carry so he can carry so first thing i'm going to look for is the heaviest ones right and we got a 30 ton let's go 225 tons which is 50 tons and this 30 tons there you go that's all he can carry but Check this out, y'all. Each ton is going to give him 1,000 credits, which means this is an 80,000 credit run just on the cargo alone. That's pretty good for him for a free trader. All right, so passengers is another source of income for Starship owners, those who want to go to different star system destinations that are on different planets they're going to be willing to pay based on the type of passage that they want the three types of passage are high medium and low now high passages are like first class state rooms medium is just a step down from that with a little bit few less perks and amenities and then low passages are like sleeping tubes a cryo sleep or something like that now the referee should consult the passenger cargo table, which we've got opened up right over cha, and determine how many types of passengers are ready to be transported off world. And the first die should be rolled, and the result of the second should be subtracted. I'll show you what I'm talking about here. We're still working with the same deal. We're going from Rustia and we're going over to Secur. So it's five as the population world, right? and a high middle and low passage number needs to be acquired 
Now, before we do that, let's go down to the die modifiers down here at the bottom. We know Sakur has a population of four or less. So this is going to be a minus three modifier to these rolls, okay? We also know there's an amber zone. That's a minus six. And not a lot of people that want to go there. You understand what I'm saying? So that is a minus nine total. And we already know that it is a plus eight for this. So all in all, it's going to be a minus one modifier to these results. So if we want to see how many high passages there are on Rustia, this is what we do. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to close that back up like that. We're going to take 2D. All right. And we're going to subtract 1D. And we're going to do a minus one. That's simple. And then we're going to roll and we're going to see how many high passages there are. One. Oh my gosh. <laughs> one high passage. So let's go ahead over here. Pick up one high passage that's there. Okay. Let's go back over to the passenger table. And we've got three die. So let's do this. Three. And we're going to subtract the result of two die minus one. And we will see what we get. There are four middle passages. All right. All right. And now we have low passages, which is three die. One, two, three. And we're going to subtract one die minus one. And make sure that's 1d6. All right. And let's see how many low passages they have. Looks like they have five. Okay. All right. So here is what we have. One high passage, four middle passages, and five low passages. Now, if we go back to this free trader here, you have to keep something in mind when it comes to the state rooms. So it has 10 standard state rooms. However, four of those are being taken up by the crew. So technically, you only got six state rooms that you can actually make a little money off of. So if we go back to passengers here, it appears as if we have enough. We can take that one high passage and we can take the, those four middle passages and we will still have one state room left over. And if we go back to this free trader and we can see what the low berths are, we have 20 of those. We have plenty of those. We can take all of the low berths or the low passages. So we can take everyone here. So how we would figure this out is that this high passage, that's worth 10,000. The middle passage is worth 8,000 per passage. So this one's going to be 32,000. And these low passages are all just a thousand piece. So this is 5,000. So total of 47,000 just for passenger cargo for this one. You add that to the 80,000, you got $127,000 or credits for this trip. Not bad. It did a little bit better on the passages here since you didn't have as many high passages. But, you know, credits is credits. You know what I mean? Now, even though I'm going to be talking about some of the different ways that you can earn money, and I'm only going to be talking about three, because next week we're going to get into three, and then we're going to talk about uh, some little extra things that added to that. There's going to be some other ways that you can earn money from this. I'll bring that up next week. If you got any value out of this video, maybe you learned a little something. Can you do me a favor? Can you go ahead and you see the little thumbs up down at the bottom? Can you crush it? Can you crush it? Can you annihilate the like button for a brother? Please, please, please. See, that's a little James Brown I threw in there. See, you don't know what's up. What, what you know about James Brown, man? Also, y'all, if you want to stick around, or, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that's real safe, but if you want to stay kind of close to what's going on on this channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell as well. Question of the vid. So we talked last week about crew salaries. Well. If it was you, and I'm not talking about a character, I'm talking about you, Chew. If it was Chew, 
which crew position would you want to fill? Like, what would you lean into? You personally, we had starships gone all over the place and be like, okay, I, I got some skill or I have the choice to get me some skill. So what would you want to be skilled at? Let me know down in the comments below. Let's get some engagement going, y'all. Oh, it's the weekend and some of y'all might have yourself a session. Well, happy gaming, y'all. I hope it's an RPG Elite session, but right now, you know what a brother gotta do. Gots to go and do my snaggle puss. So like this, and if you missed any other part of this series, oh, here it is, right here. Go ahead, get into it. So until next time, y'all, God willing, next week, got another video for you. I'm out of here. Peace, 5,000 leads. Oh, I'm out.